Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. I, oh, oh yes. I like that. What's up, y'all? It's your girl DeLorean, and I am back with another dose of Mogo Monday. <laughs> I want you guys to listen to this and share it with anyone who you know may be going through the same things, all right? Hey DeLorean, I've been a huge fan of your videos for many months and you really inspire me. Thank you, sweetie. I'm seeking some much needed advice. I have no one to really get advice from, sadly. I'm currently 19, I live with my parents and commute to college every day, and I'm a CNA on the weekends. From being harassed, bullied throughout my middle school and high school life, I now suffer from major depression. It's so hard to wake up and even function because of my anxiety and depression. Going to school is a nightmare. It flares up my depression even more. I've been to doctors, counselors, I've prayed. It seems like nothing is working. I kind of have this theory that since I always depend on my parents for everything, saving up and moving out will help me get a sense of accomplishment and give me the feeling of independence that I really crave. Could you please give me some advice on my situation? How to move out properly, how to move out properly, how to save up to move out, how to build credit, what type of credit card and stuff I should start with, and most importantly, how to be independent and how to truly love myself and not let my past affect my future. Thank you so much for taking the time to read this. And thank you for taking the time to write me. I'm always honored and I just feel so grateful when anyone takes the time to confide in me and when you really value my opinion and my perspective. I don't know it all, I don't claim to, I don't know everything, but I do know what I've been through and I just have a passion for sharing, for encouraging and for empowering you guys. And so let's get into this thing. First thought is the major thing we have here, we have a few buckets here. Depression and anxiety, lack of independence, lack of strategy, and self-perception. Depression and anxiety. It says that you've been to counselors. I don't know if you've been technically, officially diagnosed with depression and anxiety. I'm not sure. I'm just going to speak to you based on this being a general, a general case of depression and anxiety, right? My first thing would be to encourage you to change the way you speak over yourself. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruits thereof. You've heard me say this in a few videos, and you will continue to hear me say this. What you speak, you will have. What you say will come to pass. The more you talk over your life, the more comfortable you become with what you speak over yourself. So even in this letter, you've mentioned more than once, you were repeatedly said, I suffer from depression and anxiety. I can't get happy. I can't do this. Depression, anxiety. I don't know what to do. I've done this, but it didn't work. What I want you to do is I want you to get up every morning and I want you to go look in that mirror and I want you to speak life over yourself because the root of this came from what other people spoke over you and they spoke so much death over you that you allowed it to affect you. And you in turn started speaking it over yourself because the only way that it can affect you is if you started to believe it at some point or if you started to speak that thing at some point, if you started to entertain that thing at some point. And so that's what's happened. What they said, they transfer that over to you. So now you're speaking that thing over your life years later. That shows you just how powerful words can be. And what you never wanna do is give anybody the power to change the way that you perceive yourself. So that's where self-perception comes into play. So this depression and anxiety, we're gonna stop telling ourselves that we have it. Unless you have been medically diagnosed, 
I want you to stop telling yourself that you are depressed and that you have anxiety. Even if you have been medically diagnosed, you don't have to speak it over your life. And I believe in a God that can turn that thing around. I believe in a God that says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So I believe that if you begin to speak life over yourself and you begin to truly, truly say that thing with conviction, I am beautiful. I am intelligent. I'm a CNA. I did what I had to do. I went to school and I passed the course and I have a great career right now. I mean, I have a lot going for myself. I have people and parents who love me. I'm beautiful. I'm smart. I'm funny. Every good thing about yourself, you begin to speak that thing to yourself when you look in the mirror. Even if you don't believe it yet, you start speaking that thing over your life until you believe it. We have to take our perception into our own hands. Growth and maturity does not just come by osmosis. It happens when you put what you want in your mouth and you speak that thing. Confession is made known unto salvation. You got to confess what you want, baby girl. You have to change your routine up. Change those habits up. So I don't, I want to challenge you. Don't say you are depressed. Don't say you have anxiety. Stop doing the things that make you feel bad and start saying things that make you feel good. Now it may feel uncomfortable because it's just a new habit. It's not what you're used to. You're used to telling yourself you're anxious and that you're depressed. And then you're used to having the actions that correspond to that. So whether it's being sad, whether it's replaying the sad things in your mind over and over again, whether it's believing what they told you from years back, whether it's not going over, whether it's not going after opportunities that you deserve because you don't believe you can do it or that you're worthy. I want you to reverse every bad habit, every bad thought, every bad action into something positive, into something that brings life to you because you will not change your life until you change your mind, baby. Change your mind, change your life. Change your mind, change your mouth, change your life. Change your mind, change your mouth, change your life. So you start thinking good things about yourself, even if it makes you feel uncomfortable. You gotta get into a new habit, a new routine. You start talking to your savior and you start telling him, Lord Jesus, I need you to help me change my perception you get in your word and you read and you speak that life over the enemy. You speak life. He wants to take your peace and take your joy, but we're not gonna allow that to happen. So first things first, we're gonna conquer that depression and anxiety and we're gonna change our self perception by speaking life over ourselves. So don't feel bad, it's just a routine that you've become accustomed to, but you don't have to live there. You can absolutely change that thing. You hear me? So I'm challenging you to do that. We talked about depression and self-perception. Now, so let's talk about now strategy and independence. So now that we're speaking life over ourselves and we're working on changing our self-perception, when you speak life over yourself, that's gonna give you the confidence to go after what you want, right? Because you're gonna believe like, I can do this thing here. Yo, I can do this, I can. So what I want you to do is strategize. I want you to put a strategy in place of your goals. What is it that you want? Okay, you wanna move out, you wanna build up credit. Okay, well you need to get some money set aside. So how do you do that? You're only 19 and you live with your parents, so you don't have a whole lot of bills. So what you need to do is, if you know that you wanna move out right now, then let's figure out, is this even the best time to do it? So get your short and long-term goals written down and you line up what it is that's most important. So you're in school. Is it smart for you to move out right now when you could be saving that money? In the interim, in terms of building up your credit, I would start by getting a secured credit card. And you can do this by going to your local bank and do some research to find out and ask your parents for help to find out which one will be the best option for you. But a secured credit card is really, really cool. You are essentially borrowing from yourself. So basically you get a credit card and you give, the, you give the bank $500 and they give you a credit card and that credit card has $500 on it. And so every month you withdraw or you 
buy whatever you want on it. Now, my recommendation would be to stay under 30 to 29 percent because the more it's called credit card utilization. So, based on how the percentage of your utilization is how the credit bureaus will determine your responsibility level and your likelihood of being able to pay that debt back. So the lower your percentage, the higher your score and your points. So I would say never go over 30%. Don't go over 29%. And you pay off that full amount every month. And you do this and you keep doing this. Line up your goals, get your strategy in place. Because right now may not be the best time for you to move out, trust me. Moving out and being independent is not easy. I'm 32 years old and I have a career and I'm building my own business and I make great money. And it's still a serious thing because at the end of the day, if anything happens, you have to be responsible for yourself and your life. And you want to be in a position where you know that if anything happens, I'm good. I've got a year's worth of savings in the bank that will cover all of my bills, all of my expenses in case anything happens. Do you have a year's worth of money to pay bills or to pay rent? Um, approximate how much the apartment will cost where you would live and approximate your utilities. And if you have a car and a car note, approximate about how much all of that will cost you monthly and then times that by 12. I'm, I know most people say six, but times it by 12. Get your money up before you think about moving out, okay? And if you're in the position to do that, that would be the best thing. This economy is not, it doesn't play with you. <laughs> if you get fired or if anything happens, you wanna be in a position financially where you not only have the money, but you're responsible and you're wise and you know how to handle your money and you know how to make the best decisions. So, line up your goals, decide if this is even the right time for you to move out. And before you make that move, make sure you have enough money to take care of yourself in case anything happens so you don't live in the day-to-day -day with that fear. If you have any debt, I don't know what your situation is. Do you have any debt? Clear that up. <laughs> you know, take care of your bills and your things first while you can, while you're home. So we talked about strategy and now independence. You can have independence while living in the comfort of your parents' home. It's a blessing. And you're only 19. You can attain your independence by, yes, taking control of your credit. Get that secure credit card. And that way you don't owe anyone but yourself. You get in the habit of being responsible and mature with that and handling that. And then you get in the habit of saving your money and being disciplined in that thing. Setting small goals each month. Hey, I want to save 500 bucks this month. Or, hey, I want to save 300 bucks this month. Whatever your goal is, that's how you start gaining independence. In independence is a mindset. Independence is a lot. Independence is a mindset. And you can be independent and still be in your parents' home. You can have an independent mindset while having a strategy in place. Okay? And knowing that, hey, that confidence is going to come even more when you're reaching those goals. Saving money feels so good. And if you know that you're on the right track and you're saving your money and you're building your credit, you're establishing your credit and you're being responsible and wise, you're gonna feel so good about yourself. And you go from level to level. Oftentimes the Lord blesses us as he sees we're ready, available to, the Lord blesses us as he sees that we are ready and available to receive the next level. I didn't get the career or the salary or the income that I have now until he, until he felt I was ready and mature enough to handle it. So he won't have to take it from me. <laughs> so now, yes, I'm tithing. More money than I've ever had to tithe before. You know, now, yes, I'm handling my bills and taking care of pay and paying everything on time. Making sure my home is clean. Making sure that I take pride in where I live. Making sure that everything is in order. Organizing things down to the, the papers and my bills and just making sure everything is on point. Make sure everything in your life right now that you have control over is on point. And that's how you start building that mindset of independence. And when you're ready and you've got the money and you can afford to furnish your place <laughs> and you can afford to do everything you need to do, then make that move. But until then, baby girl, you focus on changing your mind and changing your mouth and changing your life. 
you're gonna look up and say, wow, I haven't thought negatively about myself in a while. And if I have, it has not overtaken my day. It has not overtaken my mood. It has not prevented me from going after things I know I deserve and that I know that I want. So you gotta have faith in the God that created you and know you're beautiful. You are wonderfully, fearfully made and you can have anything that you want, baby girl. But you've got to change your mind. You gotta renew that mind, renew that mouth and watch your life change, I promise you. You've got to be committed to it. Even when you don't feel like it, even when you don't believe it, you've got to speak it until you start believing that thing. You've got to change your mind and your quality of life will change. Because when we think negatively of ourselves, our quality of life isn't really as great. You know, we have these bad thoughts about ourselves and we don't really believe the great things about ourselves as we should. So that's my thing. Change your mind, change your life, focus on that. And in the meantime, start gaining your independence by gaining some responsibility for yourself. How many women do you need to talk about the draws before you know you can do it? Most of y'all been running around here going through women for 30 years and you wonder why your life is where it is. Because you're making dumb decisions. It's time.